Hello, this is Leon from Sofia, Bulgaria here. I'm back from my trip in the Middle East. Uh, spent some time there. Decided to do a response uh, video right here. I'll keep the person anonymous. It's a man with a family who lives in um, Australia, even though they are originally from Poland. Um, they want to move back to Europe, uh, in particular to the Balkans. Well, very good for escaping prison island. You're quite late. I would have run away at the first signs of uh, what happened two years ago. In either case, good on you for escaping from that um, horrible country I hope to never set foot in. Um, welcome to the Balkans. He says it is difficult to find reliable information on the pros and cons, in particular the negatives. Um, I asked for some more details so what he wants to know in particular is the true crime rate in bulgaria um, now looking up the numbers is fairly easy but i can say in general that the things you're probably worried about is serious crime um, homicide let's say gun crime uh, terrorism let's let's call all of those serious crimes um, all of those are quite low in general what you'd mostly need to be concerned about is if you end up buying a house, for example, is um, burglaries. So break-ins into your home. If you have a nice car, the car might be stolen. That could happen. Um, again, that's very, very likely. But keep it in mind that the most things that happens are the sort of sneaky crime, let's mm -hmm. say. That, that's the only thing you truly need to be concerned of. Um, it's very unlikely that you encounter any form of violence or get robbed in the street. It basically doesn't happen. Um, and if it happens, well, you've just uh, had very bad luck. I would say that uh, what you do need to pay attention to is that you don't get yourself involved into a road rage incident where you end up in a fight with another driver because I know that people from the West, let's say, generalizing can really get annoyed with the driving in, 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 in these countries, let's say. And you might end up being very annoyed with people on the road. Eventually you, you'll get so annoyed that you get out of your car or something. Don't do that un under any circumstance. You don't want to get in fights. Um, you can get in fights if you look for it, trust me. Don't do it. Um, is it true that the government and local councils don't interfere too much in your life? For example, planning permissions to renovate a house. It is indeed true that we are not, in either case, um, bothered by our government or local councils. The thing is that they can make your life very hard if they want to, but um, I don't own a home, I rent a place, so I have little to do with them. Um, in general, the thing is that you never really get post from the government. Uh, if you work here, your employer does your tax returns, so you don't need to indeed be too um, concerned with governments interfering in your life, such as you would in the West, where you get letters from them, for example, to take the vaccine and whatnot. We don't, we don't have that here. We don't have that. It doesn't happen. I've never received post. Yeah, as you say planning permissions to renovate a house. Let's say you have a house, you can basically do what you want without anybody um, being too bothered by it, perhaps your neighbors, uh, but the council will not care. In other case, if you decide to truly um, do big renovations or expand your home, you just go to the local council, you take someone who speaks the language and you just talk to them. Everything is done face to face in particular in the countries and the more rural areas, you just want to go there and have someone to talk to. Um, you can easily get away with most things such as doing renovations without letting anyone know. In the West, that would lead you into a lot of problems here, most likely not. But um, as I said, if a council wants to, they can make your life very, very difficult. There are plenty of examples of that happening. So you don't want to risk anything and it also it is part of the charm to just go to the local council, get to know the people in the village where you are. Uh, you will need to have some form of connections and that can only serve you in the long run. 
in particular in regards to the permissions and how that would go, I advise you to join the Facebook group Foreigners and Friends in Sofia and you can ask for the expertise of Bulgarians. You do need the expertise of locals. Um, if you offer to pay them, they'll be willing to come with you to uh, to share their knowledge or come with you for a day or so to the council. Uh, do you know if there are tradesmen in the rural areas to renovate a home? Yes, you'll need to look for them in the provincial towns. You can do Google searches. Find yourself a local person who speaks the language. You'll find plenty of reasonably good tradesmen. Uh, try not to get hoodwinked, although that can happen anywhere else. Happens in my country too. How often do you hear about bear attacks? Uh, never. Um, it does happen. So you, it's more anecdotal. So it has happened and it does continue to happen. Every two, three years or so, you hear of a bear attack. Mostly that's a very unfortunate person who, for example, sees a bear and runs away or lays on the ground. The bear comes to him and then the person gets scared and he still runs away and then gets attacked. Uh, most often we don't have any serious um, sightings of bears. There's plenty of bears in the forests, but they'll smell your neck before you even uh, get close to them. Don't worry about it. I one time saw a bear a claw in the mud. It was actually like this and I took pictures. I showed them to mountain hut and they said, no, there's no bears here. But yes, that's an actual bear food. So there are bears, but um, I'd be more worried about dogs. That's what I'm, I'm mostly concerned about is dogs. I'm terrified of uh, wild dogs in packs. Don't worry about bears. Just don't. It's not a... It's not a concern as you would have in Alaska. It's a different type of bear as well, the difference between black and brown bears. Um, what is the political situation in Bulgaria, left-leaning or is Bulgaria right-leaning? Well, here you see significant um, differences between both the West and the East. So in Australia, obviously, the, the leftist uh, governments, and so is the case in the US and most of the Western EU They've gone completely overboard with, um, well, they don't care for the working class anymore. So the whole purpose why these parties were initially founded is um, to serve the working class and their interests. And that's a very good thing. Um, that dynamic has now shifted to um, the woke uh, dialogue, let's say, and the green agenda. There's no such thing in Bulgaria. There's no such thing. We do have left what you would classify as leftist parties. Uh, we have a socialist party in Bulgaria, but it would be a mistake to classify those under the same uh, realm as the uh, Western leftist governmental parties because the dynamic shift that I just told you hasn't truly happened here. So the socialist parties mostly truly serve the working class. They still actually do as far as I'm aware. So. We don't have the huge division between left and right as you would in uh, most of the Western world right now. Bulgaria is pretty balanced in general. The current party is, I believe, uh, GERB, which I'm not quite sure from the top of my head. It is a cen center-right party, so uh, they don't bother you, but also you don't get anything out of them. So Bulgaria is well known for its corruption, but as we've seen over the past two, three years, uh, I'm not going to call out Bulgaria on corruption because I've been able to live my life here undisturbed um, and I wouldn't have that possibility in let's say Italy or Australia so credit goes to Bulgaria for um, letting most of their people live in peace uh, a relatively stable country on the other hand there's tons of, cor of corruption and the government doesn't distribute the EU funds well for example uh, but they're not actively working against the Bulgarian people. They might steal, they might rob, but they leave people to do what they want. Is that good? Is that bad? Um, it, it's another side of the same coin. Politicians uh, mostly serve themselves. Next question. We noticed various experts moving to Bulgaria and renovating a home. How do you think Bulgarians feel about that? Are they tolerant of new arrivals? Yes, they are. Um, because plenty of the villages are depopulating heavily. So especially if you have a family and you bring kids, 
people will be very, very happy to host you. And uh, Bulgaria is one of the most uh, child-loving countries I've ever seen. Um, if you have a small child, if you have a family, uh, that gives Bulgarians a sort of nostalgia because their villages used to be inhabited by young families. If you bring that back, no, what, no matter where you're from, you bring life into a place, they'll love it. All the other things will depend on your, uh, your, your personality. Like, do you have a chat with them? Do you speak the language? There's nobody who will actively hate you or work against you. Um, if you end up buying a house in a village, try to make friends with your neighbors. It's very important because they'll also be looking after a home if you're not there. And you'll do the same for them. You'll find that for your family, it might be a bit hard because there's unlikely to be any other um, kids in the village. So for your kids, you might have a hard time for them finding friends. Um, it's mostly retired people nowadays in the Bulgarian villages, except for the exes. So the exes is uh, the ex, let's say, where the villages are inhabited by young families. What is the ex? If you look at a map, you have Sofia in the, the west of the country. You have one axis goes south towards Sandansky um, on the Greek border. Now all around that route you have the cities of Blagovgrad. You have the city of Pernik, which is not in itself an attractive city. But um, you go further south, you have obviously Sandansky. Uh, you have a railway line, you have a highway being built. This is a significant axis where... Um, Bulgarians, in particular due to COVID, they could work from home. They are buying up houses in the villages that were once um, left abandoned half, let's say. So these are seeing a sort of upliving again. The other axis, so you have the south axis, you have the east axis as well. So eastward from Sofia, you have the villages of uh, Mirkovo, Chavdar, you have Makotsevo, you have uh, Pirdop. This area is just um very very popular with young families so the houses are fairly more expensive um i would love to have a house myself in mirkovo if i could afford it because it is one of the most refined bulgarian villages or towns it's a big village there's nothing left abandoned uh, you have young intelligent people working and living there um, it's how bulgaria should have been all over if it if its true potential came true it's how you'd like to see the whole country uh, be, although it is not in the current uh, state. And then you have the sort of access further east. Um, if you get to the central parts of the country, you have the city of Karlovo, you have uh, Sopot, then you get to Sliven and Yambol, which are a little bit in the middle of nowhere. But then you get to the eastern axis of the, the country, which is the cities of... Varna and Burgas, which have their own um, major centers, hospitals. So you could focus on the east of the country as well. I don't know it truly well because the east is a five hour, four hour drive for me. So I don't truly go there a lot, even though I've been. Um, and obviously you have Plovdiv, which is a separate exit. So you have a south, east, and then you have a regional center, which is actually the second city of Bulgaria, Plovdiv where all around the city you have several villages, um, you have the Rodop Mountains. It wouldn't be my focus area. Um, I have a personal taste for the village of Mirkovo and the southern axis of Bulgaria. Plovdiv to me is, uh, it is a big city, but I'd either like to be around Sofia or around the coast. Um, Plovdiv to me feels a little bit in between, a little bit left out also in terms of flight connections. Nonetheless, with your family, you should look into Plovdiv and the surrounding area as well, because they just offer some of the best qualities of living in Bulgaria. Don't overlook Blagovgrad either. Not in itself a very attractive city. It's a university city, but uh, just have a look on the map. Ask me for the questions if you want to. Uh, are people tolerant of new arrivals? Yes, um, but you will always find people who don't like you if you do better than them. In that sense, you, you should never truly worry about other people's opinion. Um, I found Bulgarians very easy to be around. Um, I find them very tolerable. They're open-minded, I would say. Um, Warm-hearted, kind spirits. It's a very spiritual and deep country, if you ask me, in particular the countryside. 
Your channel is an excellent resource. Thank you for sharing your experiences and thoughts on YouTube. No problem at all. Let me scroll back if you have anything else. Yeah, do get out of Australia. Although on the other hand, the worst is probably over. I know that uh, Jacinda Arden has stepped down from New Zealand. Who knows what else? Uh, how the whole, the house of cards falls apart. You, you might be relatively free now. And you should also know that Bulgaria has its struggles. It is not uh, doing better than it was, let's say, a decade ago. We have hit by inflation very, very hard. Everything has doubled in price. And the houses are, if you ask me, a pretty bad deal nowadays. It is way too expensive for what you get. An old house, a little has been renovated. You need to invest a whole lot. So do keep in mind that what might seem cheap at, at first glance and it hurts me to say this, it might end up costing you a whole lot, especially if you make a wrong choice or make a wrong investment. Um, if you're looking for the sort of off-grid lifestyle and you're truly adventurous, you want to take a leap of faith, um, have the sort of freedom that you don't find in other places, then yes, Bulgaria is your choice. But in general, buying a second home uh, in good shape, in a good connected uh, town, I would say. Look into other countries as well. Look into other countries as well, because it's not, at least for the time being, the cheapest in um, Europe anymore. We're quite close to, for example, price levels in Poland, which has better infrastructure, uh, is more central in Europe. So do not focus on the Balkans entirely. If you do want a bit of the uh, let's say you don't want to be in the EU look into Serbia as well it is one of my favorite countries and you might actually find uh, relatively decent houses uh, because Yugoslavia has always been sort of wealthy and um, the villages are still pretty much inhabited uh, totally you in Bulgaria, you often feel in some villages that you're in a completely desolate place. And somehow in former Yugoslavia, you don't have that. Again, it hurts me to say that, but um, Bulgaria has been crumbled by depopulation, truly. And that's what happens if a country with relatively unstable economy joins the EU. People just leave immediately. And uh, Bulgaria is in a rough spot due to inflation. People are truly struggling. I see it all around me. There's just people coming straight up to you asking for money at the tram stop and saying they really, really need it. Um, Bulgaria is in a rough shape currently. Bulgaria has been in worse shapes, so definitely come here. I don't want to be too negative either, but be careful that the grass is always greener on the other side, you know. Are we truly freer than anywhere else? No, we have to work, we have to pay our taxes. And if you look at purchasing power for the local people, it is actually far, far lower than anywhere else because prices are the same as in Western Europe nowadays, except for a plot of land in the middle of nowhere, who knows, and with an old house on it. Um, but then again, the salaries are fairly low. If you want to do the expat sort of lifestyle like I do, even though can I still really call myself an expat? Probably not. Um, if you want to work for a large firm, uh, pay your taxes here, find an apartment. Those are relatively affordable and you can have a very, very good lifestyle. Buying a house is a different thing. I haven't really uh, touched the base with. I haven't looked into it pretty much because I'm quite solid. I'm fine with my current lifestyle. I hope that answers some of your questions. Leave a comment if you want to know more because um, I might need to do a bit more research, look into things more specifically. But I'd need more specific details from you as well. So um, thank you and I suppose it will be it. We'll catch you later.